if you want to improve your street photography skills, do these three things today. Number one, photograph a location that you're intimately familiar with. And why I think taking pictures at a location that you're intimately familiar with is important is because you'll feel like you're taking pictures in your own home. And the reason why it's so easy to take pictures in your own home is because you feel safe. And when you don't have fear, especially in street photography, it, it makes it tremendously easier to take photographs because you're not worried, well, am I in a dangerous spot? Am, am I upsetting these people? Well, I, I don't know. Because if you're in your own town and you're in your, in your own city, you kind of know how to finesse your way out of situations. And that will show up in your images that you take because you're not gonna be afraid to take pictures of certain locations because you're gonna feel like it's, it's, it's your backyard. You're gonna feel like you own the place. And when you're taking pictures of, let's say a town or a city that you grew up in, or maybe you went to college there, you can almost reach back into the memories and pull out the experiences you had and the emotions that you had in that location. That way you can use it. So when you go take a picture, you can almost try to see if you can see someone else reliving these experiences that you had. Maybe it was a day when there was a big football game and somebody got really drunk and they were doing something ridiculous. You know that that's probably gonna happen again. So you'll wait in a certain location and take a picture. And that's how you capture magic. And that's really hard to do when you're in a location that you're not too familiar with. I think that I capture great images is simply because I know the city that I'm in. I grew up here, I went to college here. I had great memories here. I've had bad memories here too. And I'm able to combine all these things and I, and I use them to my advantage for when I'm taking pictures. I'm able to draw inspiration from those moments that I had in, in a not too distant time, in, in a time where I was younger, in a time when I was dumber, believe it or not. And this goes for any size location. I mean, a lot of people complain that they're not in Tokyo or New York, and sometimes I do it too. But to be quite frank with you, I have a good choice of locations to pick from because I know those places like the back of my hand. Number two, don't feel like you always have to be moving around. Take a breather, find somewhere where you wanna capture an image of somebody walking by. Usually I use uh, door frames, uh, garage doors, something rectangular or something square, and just wait and, and try to position yourself to be in a position where you can capture them walking by it and try to get them right in the middle. You start developing this skill, you'll start understanding the importance of framing and the importance of patience. I think of it almost like fishing. I used to love going fishing, but one of the main reasons I love fishing was because it, it, it made me wait. And I know that there was gonna be a payoff at some point, and sometimes there wasn't a payoff. But the times that there was, it, it developed the skill of, of patience, reward. And when you start developing that, you start taking your photography to the next level. And that's essentially what professional photographers do, not just in street photography, but when they capture nature, when, when they're capturing portraits, it's important to develop that skill. Number three, have an outline for what you wanna do that day. I sometimes just go out and start shooting, which is not bad, uh, but there are days when I don't have much time and I know that I can't just do that. So one thing that I've learned that has really helped me, and I think it'll help you tremendously, is just have a rough outline of, of where you, the locations you wanna be shooting at. So in case you are strapped for time, you can at least time yourself so that you can pick your three locations. Because chances are, the reason you wanna to go to those spots is because you know that place, and you know that there's gonna be something interesting that, that day around this time. So when you get stuck in one spot or one area, or you start drifting away from where you planned originally, you could think to yourself, okay, hey, this was, this was plan A, everything's going according to plan, let's stick with it. But another reason why you have to have a rough outline is because let's say you do plan A, and then something happens, and the place where you were gonna go is closed off because there's a parade going through. Well, now you got plan B, and now you can start thinking of, okay, well, plan A is not working, now it's time to go to plan B, and then you got plan C and you start doing this enough times, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time. Not only will having a rough outline save you a lot of time, more importantly, it's gonna save you a lot of energy. See, what a lot of people don't understand about street photography is that you're gonna be walking a lot. You're gonna be walking upstairs, you're gonna walk be walking downstairs, you're gonna be walking at least 
two to three miles at the very minimum you're gonna chances are you're gonna be walking two to three miles uh, and sometimes in the heat so when you don't have an outline when you don't have a plan you're just aimlessly walking around so that's why i think personally having an outline is really important even though it sounds counterintuitive you guys do these three things today and i promise you it'll elevate your photography skills to that next level and it's going to take you on to the next part of your journey to become a better photographer thank you guys <laughs>